Getting into medical school is incredibly competitive and it's arguably one of the hardest career paths to get started on. To get into medical school in the first place, you need to get the exam grades, you need to get the experience in hospitals, you need to set a university admissions test like the UCAP, you need to take on positions of responsibility, you need to volunteer, you need to do a whole bunch of extracurricular activities. Also, you can talk about these in medical school interviews and the jury's still out on whether this actually produces the best doctors, but that's a different topic of discussion. The point I'm trying to make is getting into medical school is hard. And then once you get into medical school, some students can find it even more challenging. You're expected to retain huge volumes of information and then apply it in a clinical setting. And it's this process of actually retaining the information that some students can find difficult. Students will then have their end of year final exams where they're expected to regurgitate all this new information that they've learned and it's in this process that struggling students are often identified. And to quote the book Remediation in Medical Education, about a third of struggling medical learners have insufficient medical knowledge. And that's a problem because these students need to be able to retain this information because they're going to have to apply it in a clinical setting once they graduate and become doctors. However, it can be easy to just say to these students that they're just not working hard enough or they're not studying enough. Or another particular lazy answer is these students just aren't intelligent enough to be in medical school. And most of the time this just isn't true. These students themselves might put their failing down to not knowing enough information and when they seek advice they might be told things like go read more, go look at this textbook. But research has shown that reading more simply isn't the answer for these students. So if reading more information won't help these students get through the exams, get through medical school and become doctors, then what will? Hi, my name's Colin, I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about ways to identify what you don't know as a medical student, which seems a bit abstract, but I'll go on to explain it in a bit more depth. I'm also gonna talk about ways that you, if you do feel like you're struggling in medical school, ways you can overcome this and ways you can retain more information and which will help you get through your exams and become doctors at the end of it. Now, the first step in this process is actually identifying what you don't know. Now, I don't mean this specifically. I don't mean that you feel like you don't understand chronic kidney disease, for example. What I mean is you need to try and understand if you have what we would call a global knowledge deficit versus a clinical reasoning deficit. A global knowledge deficit is when you struggle to answer fact-based questions. So for example, what are the symptoms of COPD? Or what are the medications used to treat asthma? And to put this more broadly, you lack knowledge across a range of subjects, organs, systems just across the whole board. It's not one specific thing you're struggling with, you're just generally struggling to retain knowledge throughout medical school essentially. And that's what we would term a global knowledge deficit. Whereas a student with a clinical reasoning deficit, well they might be able to answer these sort of fact-based questions. What they're struggling with is sort of applying what they've learned from the textbooks into a clinical setting. For example, if you were to give someone with a clinical reasoning deficit a list of symptoms and these symptoms sort of point you in one direction specifically, one diagnosis that everyone would automatically be thinking of. These students might not pick up on that. They understand what the symptoms mean but they haven't been able to compile that all together to get a diagnosis. An example of this would be an elderly patient's come into A&E after having a fall onto the right side. And when they've gone to examine this patient, he's not able to weight bear through that leg. He's got his legs rotated and is shortened. Now, a lot of people would start, automatically start to think, well, this patient might have a neck or femur fracture, probably heading down that line. Whereas a student with a clinical reasoning deficit might just not be able to pick up on that yet. And clinical reasoning is something that comes with time and experience. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to sort of leave that to one side. The way you overcome these deficits, a global knowledge deficit versus a clinical reasoning deficit, are slightly different. So let's focus on the global knowledge deficit. And the reason I'm going to do this is because these are the students that are just struggling throughout medical school. And if they don't get back on track, it can be a reoccurring pattern. You can get through your first year, you can fail your exam, reset your exam, just squeak through that, but then have the same problem the following year and the year after that. And that's why it's really important to figure out a way to break that cycle, get back on track essentially make sure that these students are retaining the information that they're going to need in clinical practice. So let's begin. How to overcome a global knowledge deficit whilst you're in medical school. Right, let's take this back to basics. If you're not able to retain the large volumes of information that you're needed to be able to retain for medical school, well something's got to change. And rule number one is look at how you're studying. And it might be a case of you feel like you're putting loads and loads of time into studying, but you're just not getting any results out of that. And this is where we need to start. The first and most obvious thing I'm going to say is, stop rereading textbooks, stop highlighting notes, stop watching lectures and just copying down word for word what your lecturer is saying. So many studies, so many resources have shown that that's not an effective way to learn. There's ample of information out there that just says it just doesn't work. So just stop doing it. That's the first thing you need to do. Please stop rereading your textbook and highlighting it in different colored pens. To be honest, my own personal experience of studying in medical school falls into that category as well. I was guilty for that as well. 
Not so much the rereading textbook part, but the watching lectures and copying down word for word what my lecturer said, and then not being able to contextualise that information and apply it to a question. It was all just words on a page to me, it didn't actually mean anything. And because it didn't mean anything, I didn't really understand it, that information was essentially useless. I spent hours watching lectures and trying to write down every word that the lecturer said, but didn't get anything from that. And what a waste of time that actually was. Now that I've talked about poor studying techniques, let's move on to things that you can actually do to improve your studying habits. And there's three ones I'm briefly going to talk about that are in lots of textbooks, lots of research, and are been proven to be effective. So the first one I'm going to talk about is active recall. And to briefly summarise that, this is the process of forcing yourself to remember information. And there's a whole host of ways you can do that. One of the most common ones and common examples of it is using quizzing. If you need to remember a fact, so you need to remember the symptoms of COPD, for example, well then you can have a little flashcard you can make yourself. What are the symptoms of COPD? Flip it over and you can write down the symptoms of COPD and you can quiz yourself. The reason that active recall works, it's this process of forcing yourself to recall the information. And the more you do that, that can have a beneficial effect because that's essentially what you're doing in an exam. You're being forced to remember information. So one of the key things you should be doing when you're trying to study is quizzing throughout, quizzing quite frequently, forcing yourself into using active recall. So the next studying technique can sort of be combined with active recall. It's called spaced repetition. Now spaced repetition is the idea that you learn a fact but as soon as you learn that fact, you're already starting to forget that information. And over a period of time, you'll near enough completely forgot most of the information you learned. In order to overcome that forgetting process, you need to go back over the information. So for example, if you learn fact A and you start to forget it, well, in a day's time, you re-look at fact A and that boosts your knowledge back up again. And then you leave it a period of time and then you re-look at fact A again. You're not going to forget it. And that again can be combined with quizzing. So if you're learning something, leave it a couple of days and you go back and quiz yourself on that topic and you leave it again and you go back and quiz yourself on that topic again, that's implementing spaced repetition and that will help you remember these facts. And the final technique I'm going to talk about briefly is interleaving. Well, interleaving is basically the process and I've done a whole video on it before which I'll link up here. It's the process of mixing up your topic. Essentially, you're more likely to retain information for a longer period of time if you study topics in a sort of mixed order. So don't just take a textbook and then go through cardiology and do all of cardiology and then move on to respiratory and do all of respiratory then move on to endocrinology and do all of endocrinology. Actually mix this up. In the morning do cardiology, in the evening do endocrinology, the following day do respiratory, then go back to cardiology. And these three techniques can actually all be combined. You can implement active recall, so you're forcing yourself to remember the information through quizzing, for example, and you can and apply spaced repetition to this by quizzing yourself over a period of time and coming back to different topics. And you can then mix them up, you can then interleave the topics. So actually, these three techniques can all be combined to sort of maximise the effectiveness of your studying techniques. However, one challenge you're going to find when you first start using these studying techniques is you're not going to like them. You'll find that you're having to put way more effort into actually studying and you'll feel like you're not retaining any of the information. You'll think the whole thing's a waste of time and you'll want to go back to rereading because you'll feel like you're actually doing something productive and you're actually, you'll think you're retaining the information, but you need to stick with it. You need to stick with these studying techniques because evidence shows they are the most effective studying technique. Rereading doesn't work. Highlighting your textbook doesn't work. Rewriting lectures doesn't work. If you stick with these more challenging and difficult studying techniques, you will see the benefit. If you're in medical school, you're going to need to remember lots of this information for a long time. It's no good just remembering something for an exam and then forgetting it again. The reality is it's going to come back up on your next exam and you're going to need it to be a doctor in the first place. So you need to implement ways of remembering information that you're going to be able to retain for a much longer period of time. So next on the list of ways to improve your studying is looking at your time management. Now little and often is best. The idea of cramming doesn't work so well. You need to identify how long you've got before your exam and make sure you're starting far enough back to actually implement these good studying techniques. Waiting till the very end doesn't work. Cramming doesn't really work. And to quote a study which discusses this by Wokshan and et al, they stated, students would vary in their studying timing, but those with less spacing potential, e.g. crammed their study or studied less consistently, would prefer form worse. Essentially, if you can't implement the good studying techniques I just discussed, because you've got such a short period of time, well, you're not going to see the benefits of them. There's no point in trying to do spaced repetition if your exam's two days away and you haven't started studying before that, because the reality is you're just not going to be able to implement it effectively. The next thing I say about timing as well is that most students will cram. Now, despite the negative effects of cramming, one study looking at students in medical school found that 99% of these students had been cramming at some point for their exams. And one of the key reasons they gave for why they felt like they had to cram was there was just too much information in medical school to actually learn. There just wasn't enough 
time. They didn't have enough time to get all that information into their heads so they can regurgitate it in an exam. They felt like they had no choice. However, the point that should be made here is cramming only really allows you to superficially understand what you're trying to learn. Yes, you might be able to remember that. You're probably not going to understand them in the context of how they're applied to human physiology or how they're used to treat a patient. They're just facts. There's no sort of context on, on how they're used clinically. And again, that's not useful if you're trying to be a doctor at the end of this. The third recommendation I'm going to make seems kind of counterintuitive. Stop thinking about the exam. The whole point of you being there is to become a doctor at the end of it. Focus on that, not the, oh no, I've got an exam coming up at the end of the year. Because if you focus on the fact that you've got an exam coming up at the end of the year, well, one, that makes you incredibly anxious. Two, it takes away from the reasons of why you're actually doing this in the first place. It's also demotivating to think, oh, I've got an exam in a couple of weeks time. We have to spend hours and hours upon end studying. Whereas if you look at it in the perspective of, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. Well, that was the whole reason you applied in the first place. That's motivational, it's not demotivational. You're gonna to want to get through this. You want to get past the exam so you can get to your end goal of becoming a doctor. Try and focus on that. It's easier said than done, I appreciate that. But there is definitely something in that of trying to stay motivated throughout your exams because if you become demotivated, it's it can be a bit of a downward spiral. And that's why it's really important to sort of focus on the end goal and not the sort of interim ones that keep cropping up and will keep cropping up throughout your time in medical school. I do have another video which focuses on what you can do if you've already failed in medical school and you've got that reset coming up. And I talk about five different techniques which are useful for getting through that reset exam. And I'll link that up here as well. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.